you know it's gonna be good when you're getting motorcycles in boxes. Hello my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. Today, well, not today, but over several days here, we are going to be working on this 1990 Kawasaki Ninja ZX7R. This is a motorcycle that I acquired, geez, I think it's been three, maybe four years ago I got this motorcycle. Uh, drove from my place here in San Diego up to Los Angeles to buy a motorcycle, and uh, gentleman I purchased it from basically uh, wouldn't let me leave without taking this. I didn't want it, um, but he convinced me and uh, I didn't know what to do with it. A friend of mine kind of fell in love with it and uh, we started working on it. I sat in his garage until I completed working on his DR350, which uh, maybe I'll remember to put a link here, but uh, get the DR350 done when I dropped it off. He gave me this bike after after getting the work done on his. So it's mine now again, and uh, we have never fired this thing up. We don't know if it runs. I have we have cranked it over. I have did a video on this a long time ago, over a year ago, I believe. But what I'd like to do get it unloaded here. Take a look at the wiring. I kind of started getting that um, laid out over at his house when we cranked it over. And I have, I think a neutral sending unit needs to go down here and put some oil in it and maybe put a little bit of water in it. Make sure it's all, everything hooks up and see if I can get a little bit of spark out of it and make some life. So let me get it unloaded. I'm working on three or four projects here today. This one, I just kind of wanted to get the video started, so maybe the next time you see me, I might be in a different outfit. <laughs> but here you go. I figured I'd put a little bit of the body work on here just so I'd get a look at this thing. And If you're a little bit older, young man or woman like myself, <laughs> you probably enjoy the look of these early first generation sport bikes. Dual headlights, a little bit square. Well, actually, you know what? They're kind of going to more square body styles now. So anyway, um, putting this thing together is quite a puzzle. Going through the box of parts. I've been digging out brackets and things like this and trying to figure out where they go because I didn't take this thing apart. So it's been interesting. I've got manual and a supplement manual. Um, to try to get this together, but uh, it's definitely fun. And then the uh, other thing is that uh, when um, I gave this to my buddy, he and I just kind of made a rolling chassis initially. We put the swing arm and the forks and the wheels on it, and then over time we slowly uh, worked on the engine and fixed the broken parts on that and put the engine in there, and then we laid the wiring harness in there, but none of it is where it needs to be. So I need to get into this manual. There are um, sections in here that show where the wiring is supposed to go, you know, like the wiring harness goes along the frame and wherever it splits, this and that. So I'm gonna try to get it as close as I can. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm going to check all the bolts holding the swing arm, the engine, the front forks, all that sort of stuff. Check all that first. And once I get all that done, I'll bring you all back here and uh, we'll throw a battery in it and we'll see if uh, we can get some spark out of this thing because if we do, we have a very good chance of bringing this thing back to life. But maybe it doesn't make sense, but I would like to get all that stuff routed first because uh, regardless, I guess if um, let's say that there's something majorly wrong with the uh, ignition system, it's gonna have to get done anyway. and. Uh, we might as well just get it done, figure out where all these wires and stuff go onto it. 
Some of this stuff is just hard to explain the inordinate amount of time that it takes to figure it out. There's a bracket here. Of course, the battery box, which I kind of knew where it went. And then this plastic bracket and trying to figure out where all that went, even though I got a manual, has been interesting. And now I got all this wiring that has to go in here in a certain order. So, well, we'll hope that it's worth it and that this thing uh, runs. Well, it's looking a lot, a lot neater here. I got the um, clutch line routed up here and actually bled the clutch out. I don't think it's quite right. Something doesn't feel right about it, but it is pumping up a bit. Um, hooked up all the coolant lines, which was a bigger pain than I figured it would be. Um, figured out where this overflow tank goes. And now I'm working on the exhaust. And uh, that's gonna be a pain in the ass, but I'm gonna get the exhaust installed just because it's one less thing that I'll have in a box. It's hard to, hard to say how much time I've been spending here sorting this whole thing out, but um, it's been a struggle. But I did get um, this clutch line routed up, bled the clutch out, which kind of feels odd because it's not, it has pressure, but it's kind of like stopping travel here. So I don't know, maybe this is the wrong clutch lever on here or something is incorrect. Got the entire exhaust system installed and that was a gigantic pain in the butt. And I uh, had to kind of fight it on the end here to get this thing lined up. It's kind of sitting out and back a little too far. But I think a lot of that has to do with the way these, uh, this collector goes into these head pipes. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, get a battery and uh, see if I can't turn this thing over and see if we've got spark. The only reason that I'm uh, hesitant to go any farther is because I'm missing a piece. Down here is the neutral sending unit and I'm missing that. But I have this bolt, I put a cross washer behind it and I put a a nut on it there so it's kind of adjustable and that threads into there so as much as I hate to do it I'm probably gonna just tighten that down I'm gonna put a quart or so of oil in here so that uh, at least we have some lubrication circulating as well so let me get that done up and we'll see where we're at I got my little test battery installed all right so we have power Horn works. Now the neutral light's not on because this is the sending wire that goes to the neutral light. And of course I stuck that bolt in there. So that means that it's not gonna crank. Let me set you here. Let me set you here. <laughs> it's not gonna crank unless I pull the clutch in. Okay, so it cranks over. And now I have a spark plug. Pulled that um, plug wire out, and there is a spark plug. See that fire? So we have a very good, very good chance of bringing this thing to life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another quart of oil. I think this thing holds three. I put about a quart and a half, so that'll put me two and a half quarts. And then we'll spray a little bit of carb cleaner in here and. See if we can make some noise out of this thing. I'm not sure if I've ever done this with a bike without any carburetors at all. But we'll try it. We'll spray some juice in all these. And we'll see what happens. I heard a little bit of something. I don't know about the rest of y'all. try.
Chances are it's just getting way too much air. See, I could hear it um, picking up a little bit there. Well, there we got our carburetors. So I'm going to pull the bowls off. We'll take a look, see what it looks like in there. These have been stored dry for quite a while. So hopefully, hopefully they're clean. So the first two, everything is nice and clean. The bowls are clean. So... I'm going to take a chance, and I'm going to put these bowls back on. We're going to install these carburetors and uh, hook up a fuel source and see what happens. My lithium battery isn't holding very good, so I swapped out to another used battery I had around here. I got the old test tank installed. Had it turned on. There's some fuel leaking somewhere here. I haven't tracked it down yet, but um, we're obviously getting fuel into the system. Had an oil leak down there, loose oil line. So, slowly but surely on this crazy project, let's see what we got. <laughs> Holy smokes! We had some noise. The good news is when, um, when I crank on it, this uh, oil light goes out. So we're getting oil pressure. Let's put some juice down the cylinders. And see what happens. Why not? battery starting to go dead I'll put a jumper on it battery chargers installed got something well you got something I unhooked the uh, choke so now it should it idles it's not really accepting any um, throttle input but I think that's because of the um, lack of the air box so now, I'm going to have to um, take a peek inside of the tank, see if the tank looks good. Um, I never did check to see if this fuel pump works, which would be a pretty good idea to see if that works. Because this thing has to take feed from the tank. Tank feeds into here. Then you select which one you want. Then it feeds into the pump. And the pump feeds the um, carburetors. So I guess I'll see if I can figure out a way to test that. Otherwise, um, we'll be looking for a fuel pump. While well, y'all weren't looking, I kind of pieced it back together just for a visual. I stuck the original seat on there. I got that other Corbin seat, which I would like better, but this one kind of looks a little sportier. And I also tested the fuel pump. It appears to work. And now I am at a... Uh, dilemma with this bike because I really honestly wasn't expecting it to run um, and run as good as it does but I'm at the point where I've got no money in this bike really at this point just some uh, oil and gas I guess but uh, all just nuts and bolts and bits and pieces that I had 
laying around the shop. But to go any further now, I'm gonna have to at least get a battery. Uh, it doesn't have a chain. I need a uh, neutral sending unit. And I'll have to think about what other things that it needs before it would be able to be tested operational. I have uh, hand grips, little things like that, but uh, there's no mirrors, there's no windshield. We're missing a few little cosmetic items. There's some little infill panels here. And then there is a door that goes on this air box that's missing. And I've looked some of this stuff up. This is available, that little door. And I could probably just make one out of, actually I could probably just put a piece of duct tape on it to, to work for now. It's the same with these. There's supposed to be plugs there. Those are all missing. Um, but that door is available. It's not too expensive. These panels are available. They're not too expensive. I found mirrors online, uh, used ones. Not too terrible. This is a little bit wonky. And the bike isn't perfect, but hey, it's a 30-year-old bike. I got some damage here, a little bit of damage there. I think this is the missing piece there. Um, but overall, it's a decent looking machine. It appears to run okay. And I didn't notice any leaks yet. But I don't know what to do. Um, but I'm gonna stop the video here. And um, if any of y'all out there want to give me some suggestions as to what to do with this bike, because it is pretty dang retro cool. I definitely feel like I could be riding with vanilla ice. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So, give me some suggestions what to do with this bike. And uh, leave some comments. Give me some thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider doing so. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.